Good afternoon. I'm Kevin Warner with Olympia Circuits, and uh, we'll be joined later by Peter Gold, my uh, business partner with Olympia Circuits. And the project I'm here to show you is the Arduino controlled bike lights. This is kind of a fun, simple thing to do with Arduino that uh, incorporates 3D printing, RGB LEDs, uh, Arduino, and some uh, unique products uh, that are available on the market. So this uh, gives an idea of what we're uh, making. It's basically just some frame lighting that will be moving in multicolor that uh, can accent the bike, make you more visible for safety uh, or for just for fun. This is just one way. We'll show you one way we uh, mounted it on the bike, but it could be mounted in all sorts of uh, other ways. Here's a quick uh, video that isn't going to run. <laughs> we'll show you the uh, actual thing in a minute. So what is it uh, about? So the idea was to, uh, that Peter came up with was to take the RGB LED, the WS2811 slash 2812 that we uh, like to play with because they're really simple to control with an Arduino and add them to a uh, bicycle. And so we, uh, we've been using these little uh, backup batteries for uh, USB as a power source for Arduino for quite a while. So basically what we're gonna do is take the five volts from that that's already regulated and run it straight to the LEDs and also power the Arduino board. We're using a little micro Arduino, which are really inexpensive. That's, uh, this is a 32U4 based board. So it's got the USB built in, makes it very tiny, very easy to put into projects. Just plug it into the, with a mini or a micro USB and uh, power that. Um, the uh, RGBs are a strip of uh, WS2812, so you can get all different sources. These are uh, 30 LEDs per meter. So it makes a nice uh, system. I think we have uh, 13 LEDs that, that's about the length of a top tube on an adult bike. Um, you can uh, easily power 16 of these with the, with the uh, output of the battery. Probably could go up to 30 or 40 if you reduce the power in the uh, code. So, and this just takes a, a simple connection to uh, run these, um, the, uh, the code to them. This is something that we just stumbled upon, uh, upon when we uh, first mounted the lights directly to the bike frame. And they looked pretty good, but they weren't really diffusing the light well. So we uh, dug around the garage, and this is actually white HDPE pipe, which is uh, used for heating and uh, running hot water and cold water in construction now. It's usually red, green, blue, different colors, but this is a white. All we had to do to prep it was uh, sand off the uh, printing that was on it, and, the, and it, uh, it makes a really cheap, uh, quite effective uh, diffuser. We got some basic wire. We use phone cords. It's nice and clean in a jacket, and uh, and then the case. We didn't want to just zip tie it totally to the bike, <laughs> so it's a it's a slightly fancier zip tie method. So we got a base that will uh, zip tie it to the frame, which will hold the controller, and then a cover, which snaps in to hold the battery. So. The, uh, I'm sure you've seen a lot about 3D printing. It's a basic build. This is a, this went through about five iterations to get where it is now. Uh, did the design in SketchUp, exported it, and printed it on a Mendel Max. Um, not too much special about it. This could be any sort of shape as long as it had enough space for the controller. It currently is a very it isn't intended to be watertight. It could be sealed up, um, but we wanted to keep it so it's hackable and, and so it's basically a fair weather device at this point. So these lights are great. They come pre-assembled on a flexible strip. You don't have to mess around soldering each LED down. The uh, controller for the LED is built into the light, so it doesn't, uh, doesn't take up much space. You just cut it to length and, uh, and then solder uh, ground 5 volts and uh, signal to the strip. And so we left it in the uh, waterproof covering, um, sealed it up with some hot glue. 
And that's it. So that's another one that's real basic. You can uh, th this way you can have any sort of length uh, that you want. And as I said, you can control or power with a with an 800 milliamp source like this, uh, 16 at full power per the data sheet. But you can easily do m many more than that in our experience. Um, and then the. And then we just uh, connect, make that connection. And then as you can see here, we just run to the raw, the ground, and uh, one of the output pins on the Arduino micro. So the mounting, this is where there's lots of flexibility. Um, you can put this on any of the tubes uh, on the bike and, um, and then run the LEDs around the tube. Uh, Peter had the idea of running around the front the, uh, of the bike so you can see it from the sides and the front and so on, uh, or mounted in the, uh, in the pipe. Here's how I have it set up on mine. So we, I do have it so that the uh, holes in the case are down so that it, it is, if it does get wet, hopefully it will, will uh, manage the, the water to find a way out so that it doesn't destroy any, everything right away. Um, I've hung these boards out in the weather. They will, they will work for a long time in damp conditions. So uh, not, not, not the best for them, but it's, uh, if it happened to get stuck in a rainstorm, you'd probably manage. Um, and then just using a Velcro tie around everything to hold the battery in. It's, it uh, loosely snaps into the case, but uh, the Velcro will make sure you don't lose the, the parts, have it caught in your spokes or something like that. And then here shows the uh, LEDs inserted into the HDPE, which is zip tied to the frame. So the programming is quite easy because these are all addressable LEDs. You can create simple algorithms in Arduino to do different lighting effects. So this is a called a sine uh, color wave. And then this is a RGB fade. So it's just going to cycle, or rainbow fade, pardon me. So it's just going to cycle through the rainbow. And you can control the intensity of the colors, the range of the color, the brightness, all with very simple uh, um, uh, settings in the uh, the functions that we have in the Arduino code. This is a chase effect. We have it set up with uh, orange and blue. This is something that we use for Christmas lighting. We use red and green across the front of the house. You know, it's very easy to just move the colors one at a time with the with the math. And so this is what makes it great. You can kind of make any sort of pattern you want to suit you know what you want it for. If you really want to be seen, or you just want it to look uh, dramatic or match the color of the bike or whatever your, your case may be. We use the uh, Fast SPI library, which I think now is called the Fast LED library. It's very robust, uh, works on a variety of Arduino boards, and makes all these, function these functions very easy to do. It takes care of all the low-level communication between the Arduino and the uh, LED strip. So next steps, um, this is, as you can tell, this is a pretty simple project. But the, the, the next steps that we have in mind are adding a uh, um, uh, accelerator gyro. We use accelerator gyros for a variety of projects. And uh, we have a little breakout board that we make that we can add so that then we can respond to the uh, motion of the bike and change the pattern actively on the fly um, so that uh, it isn't just a set pattern. It has a, a motion that relates to what you're doing. And then the other thing that uh, is something that Peter's worked on is uh, having a color palette chooser selector on Android that you can uh, set the patterns you want and the activity, and then and then 
dump that data to the Arduino board and have it go in without having to dig into the Arduino code each time you want to change the settings. And here's some information about where you can get more information. Um, we've got a project uh, page on our website that's got the uh, references to the code and the details of the project. And as I said, the library is now called Fast LED. It used to be Fast, Fast SPI 2. Anyways, changed a lot. It's very evolving. This, uh, these WS2811s have been around for uh, and actively adopted by the maker community for the last year or two. So it's really getting more and more resources for them. And that's uh, all I have. If anybody's got any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. I'm sorry. Oh, if you mounted it to a wheel. It should be fine. Um, it's pretty lightweight. I think you could mount all this in the to the hub and then wire out to the wheel. If you don't have this, there's not much to all of this. And there's other batteries available, which are much smaller. There's a, some plastic versions. I chose the aluminum house version just for durability, but there's some smaller like lipstick case sized ones that would work great for that sort of thing. You could shrink all this by about half. And once again, it's nice because most of the parts are pretty inexpensive. I mean, at most, this is like $30 worth of stuff. If it, if it came undone in your wheel, you, you could live with it. <laughs> Anything else? Thank you.